Oh, sorry, I was going to say. Oh. It's all right. You'll, you'll get it. Don't worry. I have a loud voice, but okay, here we go. We're live. Happy Sabbath once again. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Has God been good to us today? Amen. Yes. All right. I'm not even going to keep you long. It's been years since I've seen my brother here, and, and it's such a blessing to be here today. I'm going to sing um, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, a cappella. Please pray in your hearts as we go before the Lord in prayer together. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile. Here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, and ransom captive. Israel, O oh, come thou wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nigh, to us the path of knowledge show. And causes all her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, and ransom captive. He Come desire of nations, bind all people in heart and mind. Bid every strife and quarrel cease. Fill the whole world with heaven's peace. Rejoice. Rejoice, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, and some captive Israel. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. My brother Wes here. <laughs> when I was uh, homeless, <laughs> living in a car, kind of squatting from house to house as we started this ministry. Another young brother named Ty was the cameraman. We had a little Walmart camera, whatever we had there. And we shot a DVD. It was called The Forerunner. And uh, we took all the money that we were getting from a, a flooring job that we used to do. We used to lay down wood floors and carpet floors and vinyl and stuff like that. And we would take all the money that we got. We just, we just saved enough money to get gas and to get bread and peanut butter, I'm just telling you what the diet was, I'm being honest. Bread, peanut butter, some oranges, bananas, we get a treat if we had avocados. 
And I remember one day, Russ said to us, you know, why don't you put that DVD on YouTube? And uh, it was by his suggestion that we started doing the videos on YouTube. So the Lord used him in a marked fashion to be able to get this work out there to the people. So I praise God for that. Amen. <laughs> God is good to us. Amen. He definitely is good to us. Definitely is good to us. Let's have a word of prayer as we get into this final meeting. And I'm going to do the same thing we did before. Let's pause for 60 seconds. Let us pray in our hearts. And then I'll close in prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the rich blessings that you have poured out upon us on this high Sabbath day. And now we ask thee, O God, as we go back into this study, as we look at now the things that are transpiring here in the world, as we look at these things, as you have illuminated our minds with the truth that is contained within your word, I pray that you will take the scales off of our, off of our eyes that we might see how the devil is trying to ensnare each one of us personally, and that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we will be emboldened, we will receive the courage and the power to take a stand under the banner of Prince Emmanuel. Thank you for hearing our prayers, for we ask it all in Jesus' name and for thy name's sake. Amen. If you could please uh, get the lights for me. Because at this point in time, we're just going to need it. We're going to need the lights out now from this juncture, for, from this part forward. As I discussed with you as we closed the last meeting, the same methodology that the devil utilized to draw Eve out into deception and to pervert her thinking, to twist her ideologies, to lead her out into rebellion against God, is the same methodology that he is using today against us. He is using it in this world, and he is using the medium of modern-day spiritualism, the New Age movement, as his, tool to, or as his tool to dispense the wine of Babylon, the seducing spirits, and the doctrines of devils. This lady here, her name is Alice A. Bailey. Alice A. Bailey is the founder of an organization known as Lucius Trust. It was formerly known as Lucifer's Publications. Lucifer's publications. She wrote volumes of books on spiritualism at the same time Ellen G. White was writing volumes of books to the, of testimonies to God's church. Did you hear what I just said? It's very interesting, don't you think? The headquarters for this satanic organization is found within the United Nations. Matter of fact, their meditation room was given to them by the Lucius Trust. Throughout the writings of Alice A. Bailey, she had some interesting thoughts to write on Freemasonry. We're going to see some thoughts that were writing, written by God's prophet as well on the same issue of secret societies and Freemasonry. But in dealing with the uh, writings of Alice Bailey, this is what she had to say. The Masonic movement will meet the need of those who can and should wield power. It is the custodian of the law. It is the home of the mysteries and seed of initiation. In other words, the Masonic movement, the Freemasons, are supposed to be the ones that actually protect their satanic belief system. They have within their citadels the various symbols and codes and um, metaphorical uh, metaphors that they use to convey their belief system as to how man can become God without God. And we're told it holds... I'm just going to say the same thing again. In its symbolism, the ritual of deity. In other words, within its system, 
within its rituals, within its symbolism, are connected principles that are supposed to teach men how they can be God without God. And the way of salvation is pictorially preserved in its work. The methods of deity are demonstrated in its temples, and under the all-seeing what? The work can go forward. It is a far more occult organization than can be realized and is intended to be the training school for the coming advanced occultists. So connected to its symbols is the ritual of deity. Before I go any further, let me just break these things down to you and try to help you to understand so you really get what's going on here. Today we looked at the symbol of the lamb in the Bible, did we not? Now, as you study throughout the scriptures and you look at the symbology of the lamb, you'll see that the lamb is a symbol of Jesus Christ, the one who cleanses us of all sin. And we see the principles of Christ connected to the lamb as well, that he's pure, that he's holy, that he's humble and meek. These are the same attributes that we as followers of Christ as well should have. Amen? And as you continue to study throughout the Bible, you'll notice that the principles connected to the lamb truly, truly contain the whole plan of salvation in a microcosm, in a, in a, in a, in a nutshell. Are you, are you with me? Are you with me so far? So if you understand the symbology of the lamb, you really understand the plan of salvation in a nutshell. The devil has counterfeited God's method of conveying these truths, like in the book of Revelation. He's counterfeited that in these occult movements. He has created his own symbols, which he has connected his principles to, to make you take on his fake plan of salvation. In other words, take on his methodology by which you can take on his character. You see the point here? I'm just trying to show you step by step how it's just a counterfeit. This is Benjamin Krem. Benjamin Krem is known as the John the Baptist or the forerunner of the New Age movement. Now, in his book called The Reappearance of Christ and the Masters of Wisdom, he also had some interesting thoughts to say on the Freemasons. This is what he said. Through the Masonic tradition and certain esoteric groups will come the process of initiation. In this coming age, millions of people will take the first and second initiation through these transformed and purified institutions. Keep that in mind. The new religions will manifest, for instance, through organizations like Freemasonry. In Freemasonry is embedded the core of the secret heart of the occult mysteries. They're like, you know, that's it. Wrapped up in number, metaphor, and symbol. When these are purified, these will be seen to be a true occult heritage. Through the orders of Masonry, the initiatory path will be trodden, and initiation will be taken by how many? Break down what he's saying here. Benjamin Krem, and by the way, like I, I, for those of you, some of you here know who this guy is by now, and you've heard me deal with this issue. Benjamin Krem is not some guy that's hidden under a rock. He's connected to an organization known as Sheer International. They've actually ran TV ads on CNN telling people to prepare for the coming of Maitreya, which is the false Christ, the mock coming of Jesus Christ, which will be Satan coming, imitating Jesus Christ. This is not any group to mock at in that sense. And anyway, he is saying that they are going to indoctrinate millions of us to think the way that we think in this age, and the way that they're going to do it is through transforming and purifying the numbers, the metaphors, and the symbols that are connected to their satanic belief system. Now, the way that they... They, they transform and purify these numbers, symbols, and metaphors is through a process of what they call externalization. What externalization is, is to take something that is abstract and hard to, a hard-to-be-understood concept, something that is, you know, just kind of far out, just break it down, simplify it, make it easy to understand, and make it attractive so that people understand it and people want it. If they're going to lie to you. In other words, they're going to lie to you. And, and, and not necessarily that either. But what they're doing is stripping down their belief system to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the, eye, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, which are things that appeal to the flesh of man. Are you following me? And that's really what they're doing. For instance, like I say, connected to their belief system, you'll notice this very frequently, they believe that man should be able to express himself sexually very freely without any restraints. Now, those 
type of principles are connected to that symbol, the all-seeing eye, the Baphomet, and various other symbols. It's Baphomet, definitely, and very other sim various other symbols within their belief system. However, most of us would never sit down and listen to a discourse that they would give on Baphomet or the all-seeing eye. This stuff sounds crazy, okay, for most of us. We wouldn't listen to it. However, what they'll do is they'll present things in the media that promotes illicit sexual activity, which appeals to your flesh, does it not? I hope it, it does appeal to our flesh, but praise God, the Spirit of God rules over our flesh now, amen? And if they can get you on these points, in essence, they're making you accept their belief system. And what they're doing is flashing, we're going to see in a second, what they do is they, pre they present their satanic belief system in a stripped-down version and also present the symbols in the same format or in the same setting so that your mind associates the symbol with those, sick, with those sick belief systems. They're indoctrinating you in a very roundabout fashion. We're going to see that tonight. Are you understanding what I'm saying thus far? It's very simple. And I like to explain this sometimes, like saying, you know, the fact that when I was younger, I didn't like peas. You know, you know peas were nasty to me. I don't know. I just, that was just me. I'm sure every kid here liked peas from the time they were two and three years old, right? Yeah, okay. So... Well, you know, my father could sit down with me and try to rationalize with me and say to me, you know, pea, you know, son, peas are good for you. You know, they have live enzymes, and they'll make you, you know, they'll make me strong and healthy and grow up and all these things. All I know is that peas are nasty. That's it. You know, that reasoning, that logic is not getting through to me. But then, you know, he did something to help me comprehend his, his, his very abstract thinking. He mixed ice cream with my peas. And then very quickly, I came over to his way of thinking that peas are good because I liked ice cream. You get my point, right? He made it attractive to me. That's what they're doing with their belief system. Make sense to you now? Okay, let's keep going. Alice A. Bailey delineates this whole deception in a book called The Externalization of the Hierarchy and some other writings. Do not read this stuff. It is garbage. I'm telling you really and truthfully, do not read this stuff. Period. In her writings, throughout her writings, you'll see that Alice Bailey develops nine strat ten stratagem rather, for the nations of our world, the leaders of our world, to be able to formulate a new world order, a one world government system, under which Lucifer will be acknowledged as king, as sovereign. Here's strategy number one. Push God out of the schools. If people grow up without reference to God, then they will consider God irrelevant to day-to-day -day life. In the last 50 years, this has happened. God is irrelevant to most people. Is this true? Has this strategy successfully been incorporated into our society? So strategy number one of the New Age movement is successful. Strategy number two, break the traditional Judeo-Christian family concept, which is what? A man and a woman can get, right? Adam and Eve get married, then they may have Bobby and Jane, right? Has that concept of marriage been contorted in our present society? Break communication between parents and children so that parents can't pass on spiritual values to their children. Is that happening in our present society? Do you know that Xbox was developed for that very purpose? Oh, yeah. Video game. Okay, forget, it. forget about if that is a reality, that what I just said. Is that a reality, what I just said? Is it a reality that video games is breaking communication between parents and children? Okay, and various other things. We can go down the line. There's so many things we can deal with. But it says, do this by pushing excessive child rights. Is that happening in our present society? Strategy number two, then, is successful, and we know that. Strategy number three, remove restrictions on sex. Sex is the biggest joy, and Christianity robs people of it. You know that's a lie. It says that we must do it within the confines of the sanctity of marriage. Amen? People must be free to enjoy it without restrictions. It's not just for married. It's for everybody. Is that promoted in our society today? Everywhere you, t everywhere you look, people are telling you, engage in sex. Matter of, oh, have mercy. Matter of fact, remember I was talking about that same thing with the uh, masturbation marathon from, that was done by Planned Parenthood this past March? They're actually encouraging. I didn't, I didn't say telling kids or teaching them. They encourage children at the elementary level to begin the practice of masturbation. I'm, I, I, have all the, 
I can show it to you. If you want the documentation, it's right here. Okay? Strategy number three, successful. Strategy number four, since sex is the greatest expression of man's enjoyment of life, man must be free to express sex in all its forms. Homosexuality, orgies, even bestiality are, desi even bestiality are desirable so long as no one is being abused or harmed. Is that being promoted in our present society? As I pointed out before, President Obama, just the past year, signed into law that those who are a part of the United States military can openly practice homosexuality and bestiality. There are people that are married to their pets in the land of the free and the home of the brave right now, ladies and gentlemen. Matter of fact, I just saw a news, um, I was saying this another group the other day. I just saw a news, what do you call it again? Help me out here. A news, a news brief or whatever, okay, broadcast. And it was, it was on the fact that this young girl, she was probably like 18, she got locked up because she was caught having intercourse with her neighbor's dog. I saw more than one news, news uh, clip on this. Strategy number four, we already know that's successful. Strategy number five, people must be free to abort unwanted children. If a man can have sex and then live without the consequences, then the same should be true for a woman too. A woman must have the right to abort unwanted children. Is that being prom promoted in our present society? That's right. And, and the underpinning principle here is not really just abortion, but it's women being able to conduct themselves in a promiscuous fashion like promiscuous men do. It's promoting promiscuity amongst women, and if women during, in the midst of their promiscuity get pregnant, they shouldn't have to pay the consequences the same way that men don't. So it's promiscuity amongst women being, pro women being promoted in our present society. And I always like to say Kim Kardashian. We're talking about a woman that became a multimillionaire because she was promiscuous. I'm not making this up. The second most Googled anything last year was Kim Kardashian. We're talking about a woman that became a multimillionaire because she made a pornographic tape. Is this successful? You know how many little young girls want to be like her? I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. You sit here and scoff. Act like your head. You could put your head in the ground like an ostrich. That's why you can't even talk to the young people next to you and understand. The people in this is what's going on in our society. What did the Bible say? As in the days of what? What was going on? Brethren, so these are the signs that were in that time, is it not? So by, the God would rebuke you if you would acknowledge these things. The same way he said to, this, uh, to the Pharisees, you can discern the signs of the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the time. Strategy number five is successful. Strategy number six. Every person develops soul bonds, so when a soul bond wears out, a person must be free to divorce. When one starts to grow, one must be free to get together with that person, even if they are married. So in other words, divorce. People get married, people get divorced, people get married, get, people get divorced. Is that going on in society right now? Is that promoted, especially through Hollywood? Strategy number six, successful. We know it. Number seven, diffuse religious radicalism. Christianity says Jesus is the only way. Diffuse this by A, silencing Christianity, and B, promoting other faiths, the creation of interfaith harmony. Is that going on right now? I, 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 you better believe it. Ecumenicism is rampant in our world today in all religious sects. Silencing Christianity, saying Jesus isn't the only way. I always like to make my appeal to Oprah, who who has drawn millions of Christians out of Christianity into spiritualism. She said, you know, with millions of people in the world, Jesus couldn't be the only way. I mean, he couldn't possibly be the only way. Strategy number seven, definitely successful. Strategy number eight, use the media to influence mass opinion. Create mass opinion. Did the devil create a new belief system for Eve? Well, they say create mass opinion that is receptive to these values by using TV, film, the press, etc. Note well what Western believers call normal in the African church would be pornography, meaning we're far gone here. Strategy number nine, debase art in all its forms, corrupt music, painting, poetry, and every expression of the heart and make it obscene, immoral, and occultic, debase the arts in every way possible. Is that happening now? We're gonna see that without it with a certainty in a second. And number 10, 
get the church to endorse every one of these nine strategies, get the church to accept these principles, and to say they're okay, then legal ground is given for these values to get a foothold. You know, I was just, I just was, somebody shared a news clip with me the other day. They have now opened a, another, a, a nudist church, another nudist church. The preacher behind the pulpit, stark nude. You know, this would be nothing new to you because do you remember at the beginning of the Advent movement, they had the Holy Flesh movement. Does anybody know about that? At the beginning of the, Ad, when the Advent movement started going forth, after 1844, they had something called the Holy Flesh movement where people were worshiping naked. You can read it in early writings. It's right there. Brethren, we're seeing a full circle right now. Are they accepting homosexual pastors, homosexual priests? Is the church endorsing these filthy things? It's all happening. Have mercy. So now, before I go to the next slide, let me just tell you a little bit about it. I show the next few slides because I've had people in times past, thank God it hasn't been happening anymore, that come to me and say, now that I know what these symbols and numbers are, and all these things are not. Can I continue to watch the same things and listen to the music? Because now I can pick it out. I can pick it out now. So these next slides are to help us to understand the physiology of our mind and how we are affected by subliminal messaging. So let's say now you're sitting at home with your spouse. You have no business sitting with any other woman like that unless it's your spouse. And as you're watching television, eating your, yeast, uh, your, 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 your nutritional yeast popcorn, all of a sudden, one of these interesting symbols come on the screen. It's all seeing eye. Your subconscious sees it. It registers it. It records it. And your mind associates with that symbol whatever principles were being conveyed to you at the time you saw that symbol. In that case, we'll say it is money and security because that was a banking commercial. You continue to watch the television. Here the symbol comes again. The subconscious sees it, takes it, records it, and associates with the symbol whatever principles were being presented at the time that you saw that symbol and in this case, we'll say the principles that were pr being promoting in the, promoted in that video were disobey God. You continue to watch the television. Symbol pops up again. Your mind sees it. It says, hey, it records it. It stores it. It associates with it. Whatever principles were being conveyed to you at the time that symbol was presented to you, in that case, we'll say it was have sex because you could see that was sexually charged scene. So now, you better believe it. Now that symbol acts as an anchor in your, in your mind to act activate those subliminal messages. So anytime you see that symbol, your mind's like, hey, I know that symbol. I know that. I know that thing. It means uh, disobey God, have sex, money, and security. That's what the subconscious will do. And as you see it over and over and over again, your mind just keeps on saying, oh, I know that symbol. That's what it is. That's what it is. And as your mind is not being guarded by the Spirit of God, because you're not studying the Word of God, you're not spending time in prayer, you're more worried about punching the punch clock, or more worried about making it to class on time, and studying what your teacher wants you to know, which is leading you into secular humanism. And you see the things over and over and over and over and over again, it begins to break down your present belief system, and it will furnish you with a new belief system, a new belief system that is ripe, for the reception of the mark of the beast. And this is the same type of methodology that this type of teaching was stolen by Satan from Jesus. And for those of you that don't understand what I'm talking about right now, how many of you here are familiar with the parables? The parables. Jesus talked about the sower sowing the seed, the shepherd and the lamb, the vine and the branch. Why did Jesus use these symbols? To us for association, and they were current sites in Jerusalem. People always saw sower sowing seed. The vine was actually the national symbol. Shepherds and their sheep, these things were common. So it was his desire that as they saw these things over and over and over again, it would be recalled to their minds the principles of the kingdom of God that he had taught them, and hopefully one day they would submit their hearts to receiving these principles, and the kingdom of God would be enthroned within their hearts. The devil has stolen this methodology to establish the mystery of iniquity within us. Are you following now? And brethren, you know this thing is true. I always like to say, if I was to, if I was to put a red octagon right up here right now, what would you say? Why? It doesn't say stop on it. 
but your mind already associates red octagon stop. What if I just raised an octagon up here before? You'd be like, hey, that's a stop sign. You'd be like, hey, that's shaped like a stop sign. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Our minds, are so, we have associated that octagon so much with the stop sign that now when we see octagon, we think stop sign. This is the same way that these symbols are being used against us subliminally and subconsciously to work against us. You follow what's going on here? Okay, let's keep going now. So now, you'll see that this whole methodology that the devil is using, I'm going to go forward, and you're going to see this statement in Spirit of Prophecy as we go forward. The devil is using, through these means, a, a, a methodology of, of perverting, perverting our thinking, which is called mind over mind. It's what he used in the courts of heaven to lead out the angels into deception. We'll see that in a Spirit of Pro Prophecy quote a little further on in this presentation. So what the devil, the devil is the grand mastermind, behold this whole scheme. But he's conveying his thoughts and his feelings to his agents, these individuals that have political power, these individuals that have financial wealth, these individuals that have control over media outlets, over internet outlets, these individuals that have the ability to have an effect upon the populace. Because they have not submitted their hearts to God, they become ready tools for the devil, so they use their influence to influence the populace to receive the principles of Satan that have been communicated to them so that we will either directly or indirectly begin to pay homage to the devil. Directly paying homage is receiving the mark in the forehead. Indirectly paying homage is receiving the mark in the hands. Do you get the point here? Okay. I hope you get it. Now, here's our little occult symbol key. This symbol is known as the all-seeing eye. It's a symbol that represents... Lucifer. This, this very curious, ugly thing here is called Baphomet. It is a depiction of Satan that is used within the occult. Notice that it is androgynous. It incorporates both male and female the same way the devil is trying to establish the same type of hierarchy here on earth that he saw in heaven because the angels, remember, they have no sex. Remember the word of God says that? Remember the angels are not, neither married nor are given in marriage? Okay. This is what this is going on. This is called the Manny Cornuda or the horned hand. Have you seen this frequently being used today? Man, it's big time by the kids now. This is actually, it represents the devil, Satan, the goat, or Baphomet. And here's actual uh, worship service within the church of Satan where they're throwing up the Manny Cornudo to the Baphomet or the uh, pentagram here. And when you have those horns, you see those, the, those two points pointing upward. That's the horns of the goat attacking the throne of God. This is the 666 hand sign. We know. We used to say, okay. But they use this in the occult for a symbol of 666. For those of you that have never seen this before and don't get it, here it is. 666. Six, six. Get it? Let me do it again. 666. Six, six. You get it? Okay. Now, let's see if we see any of these things in our society. Don't worry. For those of you that may be fretting, I've made some nice edits here for you today. Praise the Lord. Watch closely. Delta faucets, good faucets. I think you can pick up at Home Depot. Walmart, they're good faucets. Nothing wrong. But hold on a second. The little child is doing the all-seeing eye hand sign. Notice he's doing it over which eye? Let me just throw this out to, to you from early. The left eye, the, the, in, in, in the Egyptian occult mysteries, they also had some very interesting meanings connected to the eye. The left eye was a symbol of the moon or the, the light that rules the darkness. And the right eye was a symbol of the light that rules the day or the sun. Are you following? So when they're throwing it over the left eye, this is paying homage to the devil, saying that he's the omnipotent, he's the omnipotent one, he's the omniscient one. Now, does this little child know what he's doing? Did somebody know what they were doing and told him to do this? Oh, but, you know, we could be reaching now, so let's keep going. All right, so let's go further. Puma sneaker commercial. Good sneakers. I'm going to run it through so you can see it all. Now, there's actually a, 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 a really a ton of of symbology in this one little clip, but uh, it's not really necessary for us to try to pick all the stuff out of here. Uh, 
but I think you all will be able to see one very clearly, and that's what we're looking for right now. So keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking. Yeah, you're seeing some things, but that's not what we're looking for right now. See anything now? Hold on a second. Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching. There you go. Do you see it now? You have the eye. Did you notice how the pupil switched to a lightning bolt? Did everybody see that? You remember Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven? They still in the church of Satan use the lightning bolt as a symbol of Satan. So you have your pyramid. You have your lightning bolt letting you know it's Satan. You have your eye in the pyramid. It's the all-seeing eye symbol. It, you can't get any clearer. Did they need to do that? But let's keep going. Little Wayne. Here we have, right in the middle of his hat, what do we have here? All-seeing eye. But we have one right side up cross, but then we have one inverted cross. An inverted cross means the denunciation of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, his record label now is that Young Money, I think, is the biggest record label now. This is his record label. He doesn't look satanic, though. Let's keep going. Lady Gaga, Beyonce. We're going to go through this as quickly as possible, but you need to see this. Keep up. Beyonce, boom. 666 hand sign over the left eye. Lady Gaga, 666 hand sign, 666 hand sign, 666 hand sign. You can see one back there too. All over the left eye. Do you think they just got into the dance right tune and said, you know something? At this point, we should just all do this. Evidently, they knew what they were doing. Somebody knew what they were doing. Do you think there's an agenda, ladies and gentlemen? Let's keep going. WrestleMania. 666 hand sign, 666 hand sign. And he loves Jesus. <laughs> Let's keep going. Tom and Jerry, hold on before we get to this now. Is if, I know many of you have seen this already, if you've seen this presentation. I know many I haven't as well. You're going to have to turn this volume up for me, please. I'm going to go back here. Uh, if you can keep the volume up on this mic, I guess, or something. Just let me know when you're ready. You ready? But from the looks of things, sir, Thank I'd you. say they are here to audition for the remaining slot in the fabulous super race. Is this some kind of a joke? A pussycat and a mouse? This show is about crazy stunts and people putting their lives at risk for a big fat prize. It's not a nature documentary. Irving Let's call security and have these two. Sir, it's... He's the president of Hollywood. He's supposed to give you the creeps. Greetings, your tinsomeness, imperious leader of Hollywood. Who's the president of Hollywood? Who's the president of Hollywood? That's right. And this is a mock. This is actually a mock Freemason ceremony because, you know, you can never see into the, um, into the worship hall of the Freemasons. Their windows are always blacked out or they have no windows there. That's why you saw the windows get closed off before they went into this whole scenario. Who do you think they're trying to get, ladies and gentlemen? The children. Remember, the Bible says train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, what? I think the devil is trying to utilize that principle. Let's keep going. Doug. Another supposed this to be harmless Nickelodeon cartoon. With Brian. Wow, do you guys have any games for this? Florek! Make yourself invisible or you will surely perish. Oh, I guess I'll just watch. Danger, drive the war. Beware the Florek! What do you have here? What do you have here? But what's here? You have the all-seeing eye sign once again. Doug, with your pyramid, it's all here. Let's keep going. Kids next door. 
Oh yes, I'm, this is not this is for the kids right now. That's right. Another supposed to be kind of harmless cartoon. Nothing wrong with kids next door. They're not doing anything. Nobody's dying. Yeah, watch closely. What do you got here? You got your Manny Cornudo, your horned hands. Let's keep going. Nickelodeon, this is one of the advertisements for Nickelodeon. Now, these people spend millions of dollars for people to develop advertisements for them. Do you think the guys say, you know something, I think we should just spend a million dollars to get an eye. Just kids love eyes. Yeah, I, you know, I'm being sarcastic right now. It's evident that they knew what they were doing when they put these eyes up there, ladies and gentlemen. It's the all-seeing eye everywhere, and then you have a lightning bolt curiously disguised as a, as a what? As an arrow. Nickelodeon, do you think they might be promoting the agenda? My Little Pony. You know what's so interesting? Look at the symbol on the book. The owl, but look, it's not just an owl. It's the same exact owl that is used as the logo for the Bohemian Grove, which is an elite men's club. The leaders, I mean, we're talking about presidents, uh, financial leaders. I mean, we're talking about the most prominent men in the world are a part of this group. They get together about once a year, commit homosexual acts, and present and have, and have sacrifices. This is, this, is a, this is a picture. This is them right here. This is it right here. Why would that be on My Little Pony? What does My Little Pony have to do with this? Let's keep going. Yu-Gi-Oh! shared this with you before. And I don't know why this shocks people. This is the most, you don't even need to see a symbol. Because the guys always talk about, I summon the demon master from the cold, dark demon, demon spirit. What in the world? Matter of fact, the lead character, he gets possessed with a demon, and then the all-seeing eye comes on his forehead. I mean, come on. And it's still a big card game amongst a lot of young people, especially overseas. Just saw a kid the other day with a whole just thing full of these Yu-Gi-Oh cards. But you can see all-seeing eye around both of their necks. I'm not even going there yet. Bill and Mandy. Don't say that, Billy. But I just did. I know kids here know these cartoons. You are what Christmas is all about. Listen to this. So is there this day the vampire? Can I have the sleigh? Billy, you're the only one who's ever offered me any help. You're the only one who's ever showed me any goodwill. Do we have pie? You will always have a special place in my heart and in the New World Order. What does the New World Order have to do with this? But listen closely, listen further. Hmm. Maybe you can ask Santa what he saw before he was bitten. Right, retrace his steps. Maybe pull a couple of his teeth for DNA samples. Mandy, I'm getting presents in the New World Order! Mrs. Claus said... Do you get what's going on here? Kids like Santa Claus? Yeah. The kids like Christmas? Yeah. I'm going to get presents in the New World Order. Is the New World Order now a very attractive concept to a child? Because yeah. I'm going to get presents in the New World Order. Yeah. Barnyard. Nickelodeon cartoon. I'll take you to the end. Listen to what he says. Could you hear it? It's so low, but it's okay. The cow says, a toast to the New World Order. We are calling the shots now. What do barnyard animals have to do with the New World Order? They're trying to get the kids. Let's keep going. Bob Dylan, I showed this before. Notice that you have the all-seeing eye. These are sun rays coming out of the eye, and the crown is over the all-seeing eye saying, Lucifer the light bearer is king. Okay? Now, Mickey Mouse. What 
What do you have on the skateboard? What's that? All seeing eye, crown on the eye, light sun rays coming out, Lucifer the light bearer's king. To make it even worse, to compound the situation, listen to this. Please, if you could turn it up so they can hear this part. Notice Goofy's hand. Okay, which wrench matches the shape of the nut on Goofy's skateboard? This one, the triangle shape. Which wrench matches? How many triangle nuts do you see on skateboards? But when you put the triangle together with the all awesome, you have your full symbol. Brethren, they're trying to get the, it's very clear. Is there some changes that you need to make in your children's programming? Remember, brethren, when you're paying that cable bill, you're paying to bring it right into your home. Your direct TV is directly connecting you to the host of hell. G.I. Joe. I always say the G.I. Joe because, you know, it, to be quite frank, I used to love G.I. Joe. I just be honest, okay? This just twisted my stomach. I said these guys were doing this Position to me when I had no idea. Delta is but the first step in my creation of the most powerful weapon in history, the Pyramid of Darkness. The Pyramid of Darkness. When these control cubes are placed at each of the four corners of the Earth, when they're placed at the four corners of the earth, then the all-seeing eye, remember, under the all-seeing eye, the work will go forward? Yeah, brethren, that's what we're dealing with back from the 80s and before then, too. Author, the cuddly aardvark, supposed to be the harmless cartoon, right? Arthur, watch this. Let's just get to, let's, not back, let's cut to the chase. Let's go to this one. Let's see this one first. You don't need any audio on this. Watch and see if you see anything interesting. See anything right here? But if that's not enough, watch this. Yin and yang, three rings in the code is symbolic of 666. But if you don't want to get that, how many little girls have all seeing eyes over their beds? This whole scene had occult symbology from the beginning to the end. Author, is it really that harmless? I don't think so. And brethren, I want to point something out. The things that I'm going to be showing here, the cartoons, the music artists, these are just examples. This is not excluding the rest and saying, well, I'm not going to listen to them anymore. Watch them. I can't sit here and show you everybody tonight. Are you getting my point here? 99.9% .9 of what you watch on television is garbage. And the, other, and the other percentage is questionable. I'm just being frank. And I do know what I'm talking about. Let's keep going. World of Warcraft. I know, I, I've, I've mentioned all the time, I literally had a woman call me crying, telling me she's going to divorce her husband because he is completely entranced by this game. Notice the all-seeing eye on the backs of those characters. The man is not entranced, the man is bewitched. Let's keep going. Zelda. Remember the video, the video game? What do you see right there in the background, guys? This is for your Wii game system, the all-seeing eye. In the video games, you better believe it's in the video games. Here's another game from Wii called The Broken Sword, Shadow of the Templars. What do you have up here? All seeing eye. Wii game system is supposed to be the game system for little kids. It's the fun one for all the family to play. Yeah, for all the family to get indoctrinated into the cult. Grand Theft Auto, four. Yeah, yeah, I know kids here know what's going on here. 
That's why I'm showing these things. Keep going. So here he goes. He's going out. He's strolling. Well, before he shoots somebody, he's got to pay homage. What do you got right there? You got your all seeing eye right up there. Go a little closer so you can see it, hopefully. Can you see it? It's a little dark. Can you see it? It's right there. We see. We see it all. We know it all. Yeah, I know too. This is another video game called Lenore. What's the game system? I think this is for the PlayStation or something like that. It's called Lenore. Lenore? My French isn't all that good. Lenoir. Lenoir. I should just say the devil, because this is what this video game is. Look at this. You see anything interesting? Lenoir is trying to lead you to Lucifer. <laughs> what do you have here? Huh? All seeing eye. Brethren, you see this thing. It's in everything. Do you really think there's an agenda? It is clear. Why are they using these symbols everywhere? It's in vogue. It's not in vogue. It's the occult. It's the strategy of the New Age movement. Let's keep going. Modern warfare. What's this? This is another video game. Modern warfare. What do you have here? Is this not clearly the all-seeing eye? This is a video game. It's supposed to be a military video game. What do they need the all-seeing eye for? What does that have to do with the military? Can't you shoot somebody without the all-seeing eye? I'm mocking because we don't need to be shooting people, but you understand my point here. Let's keep going. Same video game, Modern War 2. What do you have here? In the middle of the gameplay, you have the all-seeing eye. It's right up here on the TV screen in the middle of the game. So you can't tell me I'm making this up. It's right here, clear as day. Let's keep going. Assassin's Creed. You can't start this video game without crossing over the all-seeing eye. To start the game, you have to cross over not one, but two of them. One and two. Come on, brothers and sisters. That's right. It's wickedness. Let's keep going. Now, I want to share with you a few statements from the spirit of prophecy dealing with Freemasonry and secret societies and, and their connection to developing the time of trouble through the means of social, spiritual, and uh, the political uh, uh, arenas. A few statements here. Those who stand under the bloodstained banner of Prince Emmanuel cannot be united with the Freemasons or with any secret organization. The seal of the living God will not be placed upon anyone who maintains such a connection after the light of truth has shown upon his pathway. Did you hear what that says? I want to read that sentence again and then I want to make a statement. The seal of the living God, we talked about that today, will not be placed upon anyone who maintains such a connection after the light, after the light of truth has shown upon his pathway. So, you might not go out to join the Freemasons. You might not go out to join Lucis Trust. However, you've been seeing clearly here today that they have incorporated their belief system into much of your favorite media. Have they not? So, if you continue to partake of this media, after you have shown the, after the light has shown upon you, you're maintaining a connection with them, aren't you? The Bible says if you do that, the seal of God will not be placed on you. Did you hear what I just told you? Now this is a this is like an atom bomb of a statement that I just made. That's saying that if you continue to play these games, you continue to listen to that music, you continue to watch this stuff, you are now consciously making a decision to maintain a connection with them via these, via these avenues that they're promoting their teaching to you, and therefore you are making yourself, <laughs> Lord have mercy. You have just placed yourself in a position where God says, you cannot have my seal. Parents, I want you to think about that when you go home and see your child's video games that you paid for, yes, but you mean to tell me that $200, $300 is more than your child's soul salvation, huh? 
I say that because I'll never forget. I went to one school, an Adventist school, showed this presentation. The child was convicted. He said, I don't want any more. He came to the school, brought all his games, the system. You know what happened? The mother told him to take it back home. Your child is making a move for Christ, and you say, no, bring it back. Because you paid money for that. You paid good money for that, huh? You, go, you mean to mean your child's salvation is $300? You must be kidding me. Sick. Christ is not divided, and Christians cannot serve God and mammon. The Lord says, come out from among them, and be ye separate, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, save the Lord Almighty. God's presentation of the detestable works of the inhabitants, now watch this one. God's presentation of the detestable works of the inhabitants of the what class? The ruling powers of the world who bind themselves in what? This is from the, this is from the spirit of prophecy. She says the ruling powers of our world are binding themselves in secret societies. But how many times have you heard on television, oh, the whole thing of a conspiracy of the rich people in the world, all these people coming together and using their influence in their secret societies, that's a bunch of nonsense. The Spirit of God said that's what the situation is. So who do you believe? 60 Minutes or Jesus? And confederacies, not honoring the law of God, should enable the people who have the light of truth to keep clear of all these evils. More and more will all false religionists of the world manifest their evil doings, for there are but two parties, those who keep the commandments of God and those who are against God's holy law. Father in heaven, I pray, Lord, as we look at this information, that the Spirit of God will convict us of the serious nature of what you're sharing with us. Help us, Lord, to make a decision for Christ today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. These societies offer some advantages. Watch this, brethren. They offer some advantages which, from a human point of view, appear like a great blessing, but not so when judged by the Lord's measurement. Behind their apparent advantages are concealed satanic agencies. The larger the income drawn into the treasury, the more and deeper is the evil. Do you see why people are uniting themselves with the societies? Because they're trying to gain present advantages, lucrative advantages. But it says the more money that's in there, then the more satanic it is. That's why you got people like Jay-Z, when you start moving towards a billion, you notice the ones who got the most, they're the ones who are out there most overtly with these satanic things. Lady Gaga, Jay-Z, are you following what I'm trying to share with you? Let's keep going. The more and deeper is the evil, the ungodly gain which has enriched the societies will, when traced out in all its bearings, be seen to be a curse. The words which Eliphaz spoke to Job are true in respect to these associations. I saw him taking root, but I cursed his habitation. Job 5 and 3. These societies that are not controlled by the love and fear of God will not be found true and upright toward man. Many of their transactions are contrary to justice and equity. He who is of too pure eyes to behold evil will not, cannot be party to many things that take place in these associations. These, you will not look at their programs on television. You will not listen to their music. You will not look at their magazines. You will not wear the clothing that bears their nonsense. Your own conscience will bear witness to the truth of what I say. The talent and skill and inventive power with which God has endowed men are in these associations too often perverted to instruments of cruelty, of iniquity, of selfishness, and practicing fraud upon their fellow men. Mercy, Lord. Fraud runs all, run, runs all through these secret associations, and none can be bound up with them and be free men before God in heaven. The moral nature is degraded down to that which God pronounces unjust, which is contrary to his will and his commandments. One who professes to love God may in these associations be placed in positions which are called honorable, but in the eyes of God, he is tarnishing his honor as a Christian and separating farther and farther from the principles of righteousness and true holiness. He is perverting his powers that have been purchased by the blood of Jesus. He is selling his soul for naught. In the revelation of his righteous judgments, 
God will break up all these associations, and when the judgment shall sit and the books be opened, there will be revealed the unchristlikeness of the whole confederacy. It will be unearthed before the eyes of the masses. Those who choose to unite with these secret societies are paying homage to idols as senseless and as powerless to bless and save the soul as are the gods of the Hindus. Ladies and gentlemen, it's nothing more than modern-day paganism. I call it neo-paganism. That's all it is. Mystics, mediums, clairvoyants, fortune tellers, etc. The mystic voices that spoke at Ekron and Endor are still by their lying words misleading the children of men. The prince of darkness has but appeared under a new guise. The heathen oracles of the ages long past have their counterpart in the spiritualistic mediums, the clairvoyants, and the fortune tellers of today. The mysteries of heathen worship are replaced by the secret associations. What we're looking at is modern day paganism, modern day Baal worship, modern day, all of that filth we saw in the Bible, it's the modern day form of it. And remember, what would always draw away the hearts of the children of Israel? The gods of the other nations. It's happening again. It's nothing different. Man, Jay-Z is successful. I want to do what he's doing. Lady, God, I got to do what she's doing. Beyonce, I got to do what she's doing. You see the point? Just drawing us out into the same filth. And the seances, the obscurities and wonders of the sorcerers of our time, and their disclosures are eagerly received by thousands who refuse to accept light from the word or the spirit of God. Rather watch an American Idol than spend, a, than spend a thoughtful hour meditating upon the life and death of your Lord Jesus Christ. This is one of the most startling statements to me. Deceptions through secret societies. Deceptions through what? The world is a theater. The actors, its inhabitants, are preparing to act their part in the last great drama. With the great masses of mankind, there is no unity, except as men confederate to accomplish their selfish purposes. God is looking on. His purpose in regard to his rebellious subjects will be fulfilled. The world has not been given into the hands of men, though God is permitting the elements of confusion and disorder to bear sway for a season. A power from beneath is working to bring about the last great scenes in the drama, Satan coming as Christ, and working with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in those who are binding themselves together in secret societies. Do you understand what this statement is talking about? Do you know where this statement is taken from in the Bible? Man, brethren, that's why we need to read the scriptures. This, go with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I want you to see this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I want you to see where this is taken from in the Bible. Because I realize I assume too much. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Are you there? When you're there, tell me. Amen. I, I, I'm telling 2 Thessalonians. I'm sorry about Yeah, 2 Thessalonians. I'm correct. When you have it, say amen. Starting at verse 3. The Bible says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except the falling away come first, and that man of sin be revealed. Who? The son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above God, all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God, sitting in the temple of God, showeth himself that he's what? Now, verse 5, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Verse 6, and now ye know what withholdeth, that he might um, re be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Let me just break this down real quick. This is talking about the development of the papacy right now. It's saying that we will not see the coming of Jesus Christ until the Antichrist power shows its ugly head. Amen? And it says there was a power that was restraining that, the Antichrist power, the papacy, to come to the forefront, which was, pap which was pagan Rome. But when pagan Rome would be removed out of the way, then the man of sin, papal Rome, would step to the forefront. But now, look what it goes on to say, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all 
power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Do you see where this statement is taken from now? I just showed you in the Bible. It's directly in connection to the development of the man of sin, but it's directly in connection to the coming of the devil mocking the second coming of Jesus Christ. The, the spirit of prophecy says the, the people who are those who are the, working the deceivableness of unrighteousness are those who are uniting in the secret societies. They are preparing the masses to receive the false coming of Christ. Does that not say that there? Is this a serious issue then? This is not a joke. That's why this thing made my hair stand up on my neck when I saw that. You Go back. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Those who are yielding to the, passion, to the passions for confederacy are working out the plans of the enemy. The cause will be followed by the effect. And now our last statement here. Cast out of heaven, as I was sharing with you earlier, Satan set up his kingdom in this world, and ever since he has begun, ever since he has been entirely striving to seduce human beings, to seduce? Where did we see that earlier? Remember? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. He is striving to seduce human beings from their allegiance to God. Remember, they will leave the faith. It's right here. He uses the same power that he used in heaven. What was it? The influence of mind on mind. Men become tempters of their fellow men. The strong corrupting sentiments of Satan are cherished, and they exert a masterly compelling power under the influence of these sentiments. Men bind up with one another in confederacies and trade unions and in secret societies. There are at work in the world agencies that God will not much longer tolerate. That's what's happening. These various stars are being used as agents to, com to convey the sentiments of the devil to us. This is all that's going on, brethren. Bible and the spirit of prophecy is breaking it down very clearly for us. In a milder form, the same evil and the same spirit has been introduced into our institutions. Did you hear that? Matter of fact, there's an interesting statement where she speaks about the current medical system, and she said it's the same thing as Freemasonry. You should look that one up. It's in the spirit of prophecy. Yeah, brethren, it's serious. Now, let's continue to look out into society and see where we can see how they are doing these things continually. I am not going to play some of this stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to be kind to you. Okay, this is Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley is the most known Satanist of our era. He came up with the one great law. He's, this guy came up with the many six things. Matter of fact, this guy was so evil that his mother said he was the evilest person that she ever knew. She called him the beast. She, she said he was the evilest person he ever knew. She ever knew. Evilest person. He came up with this thing. Do what thou wilt, for this shall be the whole of the law. What does Jay-Z have on the bottom of his sweater here? Do what thou wilt. Why would he have it on there? Simply, he is following the dictates, the principles of Aleister Crowley. I forgot this girl's name. She's an actor. Does anybody know who she is? There you go. Here you go. You just hit it. Taylor Swift. Who does she have on her shirt? Aleister Crowley. Why does she have Aleister Crowley on her shirt? This guy's a Satanist. Listen to this. That same cartoon, remember that same cartoon I showed you earlier? Bill and Mandy? Okay. I, I, I got to go through all this. I'm sorry. Let me just fast forward this part. Hold on a second. I can fast forward this. Okay. Boom. Ah, oh, come on, brother. Uh, okay. Now, oh, no, it's going to play by itself. Can I get some audio on this mic? Oh, boy, I'm not going to get, get that part. Just watch and listen to what is said at the end of this. By the way, they're throwing the Manny Cornudo right here. 
Now listen to this. Watch this. Could you hear it? You guys probably could hear it in front. The little girl comes up at the end and says, do what thou wilt, for this is the whole of the law. This is the cartoon promoting the great law of Satan. Now, brethren, if you don't think this is, <laughs> come on now. Have mercy. Let's keep going. Jonas Brothers, what does he have? See this? What's that there on his shirt? Look. That's a, that's, that, that, is, that, that is him again, Aleister Crowley. Right there. Can you see it? There he is. Come on now. Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan. He's doing the all-seeing eye hand sign. You see it. It's clear. Who else does it? Who else? Does, not, 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 here, here's Jay-Z speaking. If you guys could please give me some audio on this so that people can really hear what's going down. This is futile. Oh, this is my fault. It's not your fault. I get possessed by, by the spirits. I get possessed by, by the spirits. I get possessed by, by the spirits. Okay, so Jay-Z gets possessed by the spirits. You listen to um, um, brothers in Paris going crazy, and you get possessed by what, too? Yeah, it ain't the Holy Spirit. You better believe it. Warren Buffett. Come on. Warren Buffett's just trying to be down, right? He's throwing, a, he's throwing an all-seeing eye hand sign, too. This is the cover of Warren Buffett's book. What do you have right here in the middle? Yeah, that's what they have in common. They're both down with the same system. Warren Buffett is a billionaire. Yeah. I, I, to me, if you got a billion, it's like, well, you're multi. <laughs> you got a billion. Brethren, do you see what's going on? Remember, under the all-seeing eye, the work will go forward. Management secrets. Yeah, the secret's out. Pay homage to Lucifer. That's what the secret is. The Tao of Warren Buffett. The Tao of Warren Buffett. Listen, the thing is this. If we go through everything, we're going to stay on one thing for the whole day. So I'm just punching out what you can see clearly. It's right there. Boom, boom, boom. Come on. Jay-Z and Warren Buffett. What did a crack dealer have to do with this? Come on. How do they end up hanging out together? How does Jay-Z end up hanging out with Kofi Onan? They serve the same master. You got it right, brother. Nelly Furtado, you know who she was, a singer, some of you guys. All seeing eye hands on. Rihanna, do you see what's going on here in this picture? You'll notice that all these dancers are forming an eye, and Rihanna in the middle makes the pupil. I, I, I'm not sure. I would not be surprised, though. I surely wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, the whole. <laughs> you hit it, brother. You got it. It's all here. Keep going. Urban Outfitters. Ever heard of this clothing line before? Yes. What do you got right here? Uh, all seen on? It looks like a moon yeah, you got your moon crescent up here. Yeah, you listen. You see it. I'm just pointing out the obvious. Let's keep going. LeBron James just won his championship ring. I'll play the Star Spangled Banner. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not necessarily keen on the way she's singing it, but. Okay, watch closely. LeBron James. By the way, when LeBron James, LeBron James got in the NBA, his first great friend was Jay-Z. Keep watching. One, two, three. Anything interesting? Slow motion. Slow motion. One, two, three. That hand sign means the rising of the moon or the rise of Lucifer. Remember the moon, left eye, the light that rules the darkness? Okay. All seeing eye hand sign. You saw it. He did it clearly. The pyramid. And he does a double 666 hand sign. Do you think that he might call upon the spirits to help him to drop a triple double? <laughs> you know, it's so funny as you laugh, right? But in the ancient Greek games, didn't the athletes 
make appeals to their patron God so that they could do well in the games? That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. There's nothing new under the sun. You don't believe they're using the code in the sports? Here's another one. Kobe Bryant's interview. Listen to this. Let's talk for a second about a guy who fascinates me, and I'm sure you as well, Phil Jackson, the coach. He uh, is sort of legendary for having these odd ways to motivate the team. I've interviewed him. You get this very mystical, you know, sort of vibe from him. And, and I was talking to, uh, to uh, Derek Fisher, your teammate, and he said, I don't know if it's true, that Phil Jackson lights up branches of sage and walks around with like a burning sage branch to spread the fumes around the locker room. Is that true? Phil Jackson walks around the locker room burning a branch of sage, spreading the fumes around the locker room, okay? Now, he asks, is it true? Kobe Bryant's going to give his response. I'm going to cut out all of the joking that they did in the middle, okay? It's not necessary. Let's hear the response. Listen. Listen closely. But, uh, no, he, he, has, he has all these things that he does that he believes in and tries, tries to uh, make sure that the energy around the team stays positive. Yeah. So he'll, he'll do a lot of stuff. He, Could you hear that? Well, you know, I can only do but so Can you turn it up a little bit more? No? Is it possible? Okay. He said, you know, Phil Jackson, he has a lot of strange stuff that he, try, that he does to try to make sure that the energy around the team stays positive. So he has a lot of strange things that he'll do. Okay, that's what that. So when I saw this, and I don't even, I, I really truly don't, I know it's, it was just brought to me because I had no idea how I stumbled on this. I was like, man, you know, that sounds like a Wicca because I had, um, I had done an interview with this, uh, this lady that was a high priest in uh, Wicca for 30 years. And if you're, if you're not familiar with Wicca, Wicca is modern-day witchcraft, okay? It's our modern-day witches and wizards. And so when I heard him say that, I said, man, that sounds like Wicca. So I went to the Wiccan website, and this is what I got for you. Wiccan ritual supply, burning sage. Sage smudge wands. And, spa and sage smudge wands are nothing more than uh, um, them, a whole bunch of sage branches put together, okay? Cleanse away negative energy with sage smudge sticks and supplies. Cleanse away what type of energy? Remember, he says he does all these things to make sure that the energy around the team stays positive. Every Wiccan, witch, or wizard should have sage sticks in their ritual supply. Traditionally, it is used to smudge cleanse divination tools, which means they use the, they use the sage to cleanse the tools that they're going to use to conjure the spirits or to cast spells to cleanse the area that they're going to cast the spells in, to cleanse the altar that they're going to do the spells on, or to cleanse the participants that will be within that uh, 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 spell casting or that they're going to cast the spells on. Are you with me? So when Phil Jackson's walking around the locker room with the sage smudge sticks, he's doing either one or two things. He's either, he's either just trying to cleanse away the negative energy, or he's cleansing the area in preparation for casting spells on the players. And that's why Phil Jackson has the most championship rings out of any coach in the history of the NBA. Not to mention that he has his, pla has his players practice Tai Chi, which is another form of spiritualism. We can run the gamut with this one. Let's keep going. Anybody heard of this guy before, Tyler, the creator? Got a part of a group called Odd Future. This thing is sick. This guy, th their music has twisted the minds of many young people. I mean twisted. Notice what he has on his head. An inverted cross. The music is so twisted that it had kids actually handing a test like this in school. At the school, after Steve Harvey, at Tyler. Zero on the test. It's twisting the minds of people. Keep going. Come on now. Beyonce. Take a look at this. Now watch this. You have, your, you have your pyramid, but watch what it does. Notice it goes back and forth from what? Black to white. White symbolic of light or... Do you see the yin and exactly the balance of good and evil, ladies and gentlemen? That's why it goes back from black and white. Why, why does Beyonce have all of these pyramids in her performances? Drake, 
I'm not gonna play the audio so it'll kill you. It's pretty loud already. This is another big rapper. He says, the all-seeing eye, my eye seen it all. At the time he's saying it, he squints his left eye and on his shirt he has what? The all-seeing eye. Do you think this guy knew what he was doing? Come on, obviously. Here's this little girl. Look at this, the cutest little girl, has no idea what she's doing, but they have her throwing up the all, the 666 hand sign over her left eye. Cutest little thing. No idea what she's doing. Let's keep going. Cray Sean. Anybody ever heard of her before? Some of y'all here have. No, she's doing the all seeing eye hand sign. Zoe Saldana. Here we go again. Beyonce. All seeing eye hand sign again. Snow White and the, and, the, and the Huntsman. This is a new movie that just got released. Notice they're doing the all-seeing eye sign right here. And if you don't think they got it here, they do it another one. In every advertisement for the movie, they do the same thing. What do you think they're promoting? There's something wrong with everybody's eyes. Come on, brethren. Look at this. Carrie Underwood. Willow Smith. Justin Bieber. Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj, what's going on? Come on now. T-Pain, 666 hand sign. Name of the album is Three Rings. Notice that the two E's are turned around to be three threes, or two threes, like 33? Like the 33rd degree of Freemasonry? T-Pain video, old one. Nonetheless, it helps to... To, to just put the point in. What do you have here? All seeing eye hand sign. Continue watch the video. Watch what else comes in. Watch what else comes in. See anything else interesting? I mean, there's a lot of symbology in this video, actually, but you see anything else interesting? Three lightning bolts on his shirt. Remember the lightning bolts, the symbol of? And they would use three lightning bolts in the cult to denote 666 as well. And I always appeal to the fact that, you know, I used to write treatments for music videos. Any video that's done in a controlled environment, you know, this thing is scripted from the beginning to the end. This was in happenstance. You understand what I'm trying to share with you? They know what's going on. Let's keep going. Lady Gaga, 666 hand sign. There it is. Ju Justin Timberlake, 666 hand sign with both hands. He does this song with the 3-6 Mafia, but he has no idea what he's doing. Come on! Drake! Victoria's Secret, the secret is out! We know! Beyonce, 666 hand sign, all sync eye in the middle. Lil Wayne, 666 hand sign, pyramid in the middle. Oprah Winfrey, we know already, double 666 hand sign. Justin Bieber, he's doing them all right now. All of them. The most Googled anything last year on the internet was Justin Bieber. I said the most Googled anything. I didn't say person or inter, I said anything. Guess who else is doing it? I know some of you already here know, so you can go ahead and say it. The Pope. What kills me is that people laugh at this slide. This is the one that should make you suck the air out of the room. Because the fact of the matter is, is that this slide, it just proves unequivocally that this, say, this hand sign is satanic. Because the Pope ain't trying to get a record deal. He doesn't care about Little Wayne and Justin Bieber and Beyonce. This man is the Antichrist of Bible prophecy. He is the very Christ of the devil. That sign, when it's done like this, it's not just 666. It means that Lucifer's vision is coming into fruition or reality. So when he, and this pope, it's fitting that he did it because he's the pope that was most successful in carrying out the agenda of the ecumenical movement. Yeah. So when Beyonce's doing it, what is he saying? Justin Bieber's helping Lucifer's vision come into fruition. Little Wayne's helping it. Beyonce's help. They're helping it. And you're sitting down listening to it, watching it, indulging in it. You're loving it. Girls rule the world, the world that's going to burn in hell.
brethren, this is not a joke. This thing is serious. And I'm just trying to show you how, how they're doing it. I'm going to pass this slide for time's sake. See anything interesting? Watch again. See anything interesting? Keep looking. See anything interesting? Now, did they want you to see that? But did they want you to see that? Now, remember I told you, they'll show the symbol, and they'll also promote the principle at the same time so that your, your mind, so you associate. Now, watch this. Listen to what is associated with this all-seeing guy in this one. If I could. I, I don't think you want this book. It's all about atheism. Oh, I know. I'm an atheist. Really? So am I. It's all yours. I feel bad taking the last copy. Well, there's one way to settle this. If there is a God, send another copy. Well, I guess that's our answer. Oh, bless me. Atheism is connected with the all-seeing eye, the rejection of the knowledge of God. But isn't that the effects of the wine of Babylon that we learned earlier? By the way, is there another principle being promoted here? It's a dog hitting on a woman. It's bestiality. What do they use? They use cartoons. They use comedy. Why? It disarms you. Exactly. Let's keep going. Family guy, you got to hear this. You got to hear this. I'm a Methodist. We believe that the Lord is our Savior, and we remember him by going to church and praising him every Sunday. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. We believe all the same things that you believe, but we go to church on Saturdays. What? <laughs> Did you get what just happened in this clip? He said, I'm a Methodist. And we honor our Lord and Savior, and et cetera, et cetera. This guy says, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. We believe the same thing you do, but we go to church on Saturday. This guy says, oh, you're crazy. This is this, it's a cartoon called Family Guy. Anything that I'm showing you here is things that millions of people. Yeah, and you see, I understand why he would ask that question. Because it's, 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 it's almost mind-boggling that something like that is going on right now. I'm trying to let you know, brethren, it's going down right now. I haven't watched TV in 10 years. Praise the Lord! Yeah. I'm in agreement. Did you see that? Okay, now let's stop that now. Did, 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 did you see the seriousness of this? This is not a joke. You don't get it. You don't get it. They're actually, they're conditioning people to think we're kooks. Come on, brother. All that crazy group of people? Yeah, they're extremists. Get rid of them. Come on, y'all. Vibes Cartel. Biggest reggae artist. What do you have here on his hand? Make it clear. Masonic Compass and Square. This is what he says in his song. There is 33 degrees of masonry. Heights are evil. There is 33 degrees of masonry. Heights are evil. I'll break it down for you because I know some of you don't understand. Patwa. He says, basically he said, I've reached the 33rd degree of masonry, which is the heights of evil. His music, along with another reggae artist in Jamaica, literally led to the murder of, I mean, murder after murder. They got locked up because of their music in Jamaica. You understand what I'm trying to say? Brethren, Simon, for your American idolatry. Yeah. This is a, um, a, 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 a commercial clip from MTV. You know, sometimes in between videos and, and uh, well, television programs now, they hardly show videos. They, they, uh, they show little things playing music. This is clearly the all-seeing eye. We can tell that. But the most frightening thing about this one is you see how fast it was moving, right? When you freeze frame this video and you start looking at it more closely, you begin to see some interesting elements. Number one, you see anything here in the corner? The number is 33. The thing spins again. You see anything in that corner? Make it a little closer. You see that? It's the Masonic compass and square. So you put the 33 together with the Masonic compass and square, what do you got? 33 degree of masonry. Now, did they want you to see it? No. But did they want you to see it? Yes. 
They know your subconscious would see it. Brethren, come on now. You're going to tell me this is not an agenda. At this point, if you don't believe this thing is true, have mercy on you. I'm not even going to deal with this clip. You already know Obama has endorsed homosexuality. Let's keep going. I'm going to keep going because I want to get to a closing clip. We've seen so much. I want you to see this one, though. I want you to see this one. It's another good example. Okay, but you got to be prepared because you don't know what I went through. To look, You're going to make the team. You just got to win. Let me show you some takedowns, show you some moves, show you what it's like to be a real man, okay? okay? Curtis, get down on your hands and knees. <laughs> This is funny, right? This is funny? There's nothing funny about this. Now, obviously, they're promoting homosexuality. It's very clear. He tells his son, I'm going to show you how to be a real man, and he tells another man to get down on the hands and knees when he throws up the man in Cornudo. He's associating the homosexuality with the sign. Once again, it's done again to reinforce it. Do you see it, brethren? Twice. I'll show you how to be a real man. Because real men humble other men. Miami Medical, CBS, you're all seeing I Network. Manny Cornudo, Pope, we see him doing it. Lupe Fiasco, rapper, a lot of you guys here know who he is as well. <clears throat> this was the album cover of his last album before this one called The Cool. All you got here is the all-seeing eye with a whole bunch of occultists. I mean, come on, brethren. This guy called ASAP Rocky, you ever heard of him before? It's a new artist. They're reading the Bible in the beginning, and look what, they, look what the guy's playing inside of. A baffleman. Guaranteed you're going to, this is going to be another one of the big artists within the next year. Right here, the Baphomet. Kanye West. Anything interesting? What do you got? Your Baphomet. See this ring. Now, I got this right here directly from a, 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 a Satan worshiper website, okay? Or it says here, the limited edition ring is honor of Baphomet. Tell her you love her with the devil's head on her finger. Now, that's what they have on this Satan worshiper website. But who's wearing one? Beyonce. Lady Gaga. Baphomet again. I just, I'm showing you all of this so that unequivocally, you will see that this stuff is a reality. Lady Gaga, where does she get her name from? This is interesting to me. The name Gaga or Kaka is an old Babylonian hermaphrodite deity. Ishtar has many names. Anu, Anshar, Bel, Gaga. Dagon, Shamash. No Dagon from the Bible? Gog, you know Gog and Magog? Derived from the Babylonian deity called Gaga. Ishtar, the hermaphrodite deity of the Amorites, one of its names is Gaga. Lady Gaga is an outright practicing homosexual, um, bisexual. When she came into the industry, many people thought she was hermaphrodite. Interesting. She's named directly after a Babylonian deity. Come on. Now, this is my final clip for this evening. But you need, I, if I can get audio clear on anything, I need the audio clear on this one, please. The, this last clip is Bob Dylan having an interview on 60 Minutes. Just please listen closely to this. Go back. Out here doing these songs, you know, you're still on tour. I do, but I don't take it for granted. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. You know, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and in this earth and in, uh, and in a world we can't see. 
man said straight up to you that he made a covenant with the devil. If he continues to make the music because he's holding up his end of the bargain, and he made a covenant with the chief commander on this earth and the earth that we cannot see. You can turn the lights on now, please. Brothers and sisters, is this a joke? Amen. And, the, and, and as I always love to share at this point, and I must share, you know, the reason why this is always, this has been an important subject matter to me is because of my personal involvement in these things in times past. At the age of 19, I left college, and I, um, I went to New York, and my full focus was to get into the entertainment industry. I, I always was into um, rap music. From the time I was 13, I was rapping and everything like that, and I got a little older. It was really great in high school. You know, every time my father would go to high school, go, go to the PTA meetings, all the teachers would say he's the best rapper in the school. He didn't really like that. And, you know, my parents would never sign a, a record contract for me so because I was on, you know, they wouldn't do that for me. So I was underage. I couldn't sign a contract. So, you know, that was an idea that had to go out the window for me. At the age of 19, uh, I was put out of school in academic probation because I was having so much fun. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to pursue that, my, my dream to get into the entertainment industry. And within about two and a half, three months, I was able to break in. And I started uh, writing treatments for music videos. And which is simply just writing the storyline for a music video. They would give me the music, and I'd say, okay, you know, this is what I think it, you know, the scene should look like. It would convey the, the, the message behind the music. And I did this, and I worked with a lot of different artists, people that are still prominent in the industry, et cetera. And I remember one day my um, managers called me into their office, and they said, you know, Chris, you've been doing a really good job on all the writing projects that we gave you. We wanted to know if you'd like to try your hand at writing a movie script. And I said, well, you know, I'm 19, I'm like, at this point, I'm like 20 going on 21. This is a big opportunity for me. I knew that this would, you know, uh, certainly help me in, in obtaining all the different goals I had for the industry. So I said, of course, when do I have to have the script in? And they said, tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. So I was like, what? And they said, well, you know, Chris, I know, you know, we just got this project. We're producing it. They don't have a known writer on the project as of yet. So we thought you'd like to try your hand at it. So I said, all right. I left from their office. He said, you know, just try it, see what you can do, and, you know, bring it to us. So I left their office that morning, and I went to the supermarket, and I bought a can of coffee. It was chock full of nuts. And um, I'm not condoning the drinking of coffee, by the way. Do not drink coffee. I went home, and I put that can of coffee on my desk, and I began to write. And as I was writing, I began to get a little tired, so I opened up that can of coffee, and I, I took about three to four handfuls of that coffee, and I ate it. So I didn't drink it, I ate the coffee. A few minutes later, you know, I had the fishbowl eye effect going on. I'm just there writing, you know. Next day, I came into my manager's office, and I dropped on their desk a 200-plus page script. And they looked up at me and said, what's this? I said, it's the script you asked me for. So he looks at my other manager, he looks at me and says, well, is it any good? I said, I have no idea. And I did have no idea. I didn't know what was inside of that script. A few days later, time went, and they, it turned out that the script was really good. They started passing it along to some different executives within the industry. And um, then they started testing me. They said, you know, Chris, we have like this uh, pilot we want you to write uh, for Snoop. Uh, uh, can you do it? I said, yeah. Uh, when, when do I have to have it in? They say, uh, I think this one, they said like uh, two weeks from now. So I said, before the two weeks were up, I had the pilot in. They say, you know, Chris, we have another movie project. Uh, we have a script to work on. Um, sure, I'll do it. When do I have to have it in? They say, uh, a week from now. For the week was up, I'd have it in. And this went on and on and on like this with different projects. And for those of you that know anything about movie scripts, I'm living in, this is California, right? So for those of you that know anything about movie scripts and all this, you know that you don't develop a movie script in a week, in a month. You know, most movie scripts are developed six plus months. At least, I was doing scripts within a month, weeks, I mean, months time. I was doing scripts in two weeks time, a week's time. You following me? What I didn't tell most people is that the fact that I would write most of my scripts 
and come up with most of my music. And at that time, I, I didn't write any lyrics down. Everything just came to me in my head. All my songs, they'd be right there in my head. And my girlfriend, she would know like a song was coming to me. She'd be like, oh, you got a song coming to you right now. I'd say, yeah. And I'd just, be, I'd just sit there and be quiet. It would just come to me as the beat would be playing. And um, at her house, where I would write my scripts, I would smoke a lot of marijuana, and her father practiced voodoo there. So they had a lot of different voodoo implements in the house, like you know, different things that he utilized. So you can imagine what type of influence that I was under at that junction. One day I had went home and I looked in the mirror, and I saw something in my eyes that I realized it wasn't myself. I realized something was present there with me that was not me. I smiled at the mirror. The reason I smiled is because I realized that whatever th that thing that was that was with me, it was giving me the ability to be successful in the industry. It was not just giving me success in the industry, but it was also giving me success on the streets because, you know, I sold drugs at that time, and, you know, it's all about respect. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not the tallest guy. I mean, I was definitely much more muscular than I am now. But... It was to the fact that even the, my, like the friends I was telling you about, they would not want to look me in my eyes. They would get scared. They'd just look and they would just turn away their heads because that thing was getting me that respect. I thought it was a good thing until I began to realize what I thought I had control of really had control of me. I started acting in different ways that wasn't, you know, it wasn't the way I was brought up. I, I mean, I, I was always acting ways I wasn't brought up, but it was completely out of character for me, just really far gone. And, and one of the instances I like to bring up is the fact that I remember one day we were in the midst of a, um, I was with a couple of my boys out in Queens, and some beef broke out, and a huge shootout broke out. People were, just run, people were running on cars shooting automatic weapons, you know, and, and shooting guns. So here I was running for my life, and I, I grabbed, this young lady that was running for her life, and I, used, and I, and I, and I drew her close to me. I used her as a human, bo a human shield. And she was screaming for her dear life. I'll never forget her screams, but she said, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. And I remember I told her very unkindly, I can't repeat what I said, to be quiet. After that, though, I realized, I said, you know, man, I'm going too far. I, I don't even know what's going on with me here. And I started wanting to have a release from what was going on, but I didn't know how to get out. One day I had went and picked up some money from a guy that was working for me and went uptown and went to buy some drugs. And I did something, I had a lot of, you know, I bought, you know, what we call weight. And I did something that I would never do, something that anybody that had any intelligence that's involved in that type of transaction would never do. I went to the near, a nearby park and I sat down on the park benches and I, uh, and I lit up a, a blunt to smoke. And as I would get, went to smoke, and as I started to smoke, I heard this voice start speaking to me in my head and said, Chris, you know you need to stop smoking weed. And I said, you know I need to stop smoking weed. He says, Chris, you know you need to stop selling drugs. I said, you know I need to stop selling drugs. He says, Chris, you need to stop writing movies. I said, I need to stop writing movies. You need to stop rapping. I need to stop rapping. You need to go to school and become a preacher. I'm going to school and become a preacher. I had a Damascus Road experience that day in that park. It was out of nowhere. It wasn't something, I wasn't studying the Bible, nobody was preaching to me and all these things. It just happened out of nowhere, and I heard the voice of God. And everything that I heard, it sound right, because I knew that whatever that voice was telling me was what was going to get me free from the predicament that I found myself in at that time. I went home that day, and uh, my friend called me on the phone and said, you know, what are you doing this afternoon? I said, man, I'm not going to the studio today, man. I'm not smoking no weed anymore. I'm getting ready to go to school to become a preacher. <laughs> he said, What? I was with, he said, I was with you last night. We were smoking together last night in the studio. Man, I'm not going to work. I'm coming over. You're going to tell me what happened. And he came over, and I expressed to him what the Lord had done for me. And as a result of me making my surrender to, to the Lord at that time, every one of my friends that were in my inner circle gave their hearts to the Lord. And then we just started our campaign on the streets, preaching the word of God. It was awesome, to be quite frank. Because it was like, I didn't care what you were doing. You could have been on the street with a whole kilo in your hand. We would have you hemmed up in a corner until you professed Jesus as Lord. <laughs> that was it. It was just like it was just like that. That was it. Gang members. We, I mean, we actually, one day we had a whole, there was a whole group of, there was a fear going on 
and a lot of young people were in the McDonald's. We had all the young people in that McDonald's holding hands praying. It was just amazing. You just thought that's the type of things that were going on. And all type of supernatural occurrences were taking place during that time. Lights were going on and off, knockings on doors. And it got so crazy that my, my, my stepmother took, took my two little sisters out of the house to her mother's house because she thought somebody was going to get killed in there. It was just that bad. I remember one day I was just saying, man, this, you know, this thing is amazing. My life is like a comic book now. I was expressing this to my sister. How within a week's time, everything just radically changed in my life. And I was laying there in my bed that night just thinking about, God, how my life was so different. And all of a sudden, I couldn't move. I tried to move my arm. I couldn't move my arm. I tried to move my leg. I couldn't move my leg. I tried to open my mouth. You know what happened, right? I couldn't open my mouth. And the next thing I heard was, shh, shh, sound like wind was fighting each other. And that time, I closed my eyes because the window wasn't open. And I realized what was going on was something that was beyond my control. I realized that I was being attacked by demons. And I remembered about the name of Jesus having power. And so I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then, you know, I remember, I remember something about Michael being Jesus when he's going to war. So, you know, I like war, right? So I'm like, Michael, Michael, Archangel, come help me now. And then I said Jesus about one or two more times, and all of a sudden it just broke off of me. And I was pushing so hard on that bed, it was like I just flew up onto my feet. And I said, this is real, Jesus is real. I was screaming in the house. It was like 1 o'clock in the morning. Hey, man, what's going on? I'm like, what's going on? Jesus is real. This thing is real. That's all I could say, man, is we rustle not against flesh and blood. Then I invited over my house that young lady that um, I was dating and doing the music with it, et cetera. I brought her over to my house, and I sat her down in my kitchen, and I began to tell her about what the Lord was doing for me in my life and all the supernatural occurrences that were taking place. And as we were talking, all of a sudden, we heard a piano playing. Now, my father had a piano in his house, and I did have some friends over at that time. And so um, I looked into the room where my friends were, and all of them were in there knocked out sleeping. But then I heard the piano playing still. So I took her by the hand. I said, come with me for a second. So we went to go to the room where my father's piano was. He had to walk up like three stairs or three or four stairs, something like that, four or five, whatever. And as we began our ascent up the stairs, we looked into the room where the piano was, and we just saw piano keys randomly going down. Bing, 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 bing. I looked over at her. She was frozen stiff, and she had tears just flowing down her face freely. I was ready to run, too. I was never going to lie. I was terrified. But again, I remember that at the name of Jesus, there's power. As I said, no, no, let's pray. I went in the room, and I knelt down with her, and we prayed, and the piano stopped playing. And I told her, see, I'm telling you, this thing is real. This is not a joke. This is serious. And so that summer, I, I, I went through that whole summer having this close relationship with the Lord, and I finally went off to college. I won't name the college. It was Oakley. So... I went off to college. I'm not just insane here. So I went off to college. And I had my first theology class, and I had my, you know, my Tim's on and my cut-off sleeve shirt, you know, and my do-rag. I'm just telling you what it was, you know. But I loved the Lord, though. I did. I just needed some reforms. <laughs> but, but, it, but it was real. There was, no, there was no anything Jesus wanted me to do at one point. I was willing to do it. Guaranteed. I, but after that class, something happened to me. I walked out of that class, and I walked out onto that big lawn in front of the theology department. And I began to look around, and I saw students with book bags and books and pencils and book bags and pens and book bags and pencils and notebooks and pencils and books and pencils and book bags and students. And I thought to myself, what in the world am I doing here? These guys are here trying to study to learn how to make money. I just left money. Then I went to my suite. And one of my suite mates had the popular hip hop magazine of that day, which was the Source magazine. And inside of it was an advertisement for my movie that was getting ready to be released in the theaters. You know, my hands went up in the air then. I was like, this is, I'm crazy. I'm done. In fact, that's when I met Ty out there then. I said, I'm done. I'm finished. I'm going back into the world. Sure enough, I started selling drugs. 
I got right back into the game. Started bringing drugs from New York to Alabama to make more money. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But the Lord was good. Yeah, trafficking. The Lord was good. He was good to me because we had an operation going. And everybody, the guys that were running part of up, they got, they got, I mean, I remember the day I came there and I saw the police there. Those guys got locked up. It was time for me to get out of town. So I came back to New York. Here I am. And I figured, you know, I'm going to get back into the music. I'm going to get back into the music. I'm going to do this. Brethren, when I tried to write, when I tried to write anything, when I tried to do anything, you know what happened, right? Nothing came out. I couldn't come up. I couldn't. You know, writer's block is the most frustrating thing for a writer. You're ready to kill everything around you, whether it's living or not, because you can't get anything out of your head. I could not get anything out, and then I said, I know what I need to do. I got to denounce Christ, and it'll all come back. And so, she said, unpartable sin. Obviously, it's not unpartable, but I'm back here again. The Bible says if we denounce the spirit of God, that's the unpardonable sin. It says you can speak a word against the father or son, but you speak a word against the spirit, there's no help for you. Doesn't the Bible say that? Speak according to the word of God, sister. So, I came back home, and I said, I know what I got to do. You know, I had some money, a couple thousand dollars. I said, I'm going to get some new jewelry. I'm going to get some new tattoos, get my image back right. Get some, you know, I'm going to get some weed, get some, go some more tracks for my producer. I'm just going to... I'm just going to get it all back right. I'm going to get it back. I went out that day. I did exactly that. And I went to the jewelry store. I remember I saw some rosary beads, and I picked out the rosary beads because I knew that the rosary beads were connected to the Roman Catholic Church. Roman Catholic Church is the Antichrist power, so I'm saying I'm down with Antichrist. I'm against Christ, okay? But to go the further step, I said, okay, I like those, but then I told the jeweler, turn the cross upside down. He said, what would you want to do that for? I said, because I'm paying for it, and I want you to turn the cross upside down. So I leave the jeweler, I got my weed, everything went home, turned the lights out. There's just a little light, there was just a little light. I, th I think it was from the recorder, because I can remember the whole situation very clearly. And I lit up some marijuana, turned on the tracks for my producer, and I just looked in the mirror and began to smoke. And I was just looking at myself, staring at myself in the eyes, just trying to get in that space, if you know what I mean. And you know what happened, right? It all came back. And I, st I, I, tried to make, I tried to make songs as fast as I could before God could stop me and keep me from finishing my album and bringing me back to Jesus. I'm telling you the situation. Now, I'm sharing this information to let you know, young people, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a spirit behind the entertainment. This is not a joke. This is serious. The devil is moving to lead us into deception. And brothers and sisters, we cannot leave here today with this information and compromise and play with these things a little bit and say, maybe I'll just listen to it a little bit here or there and think that it'll be okay. It's not a joke. Because compromise will bring destruction. You don't believe so? I'm going to tell you a testimony that I had, I probably over, I've already told about three times. And the really, really reason I don't tell it three times is, frankly, it scares me. It scares me. The Lord has told me I need to tell it. Two years ago. How long ago? Two years ago. I was in the shower. It's a good thing to do. And as I was in the shower, all of a sudden, this beat just pops into my head. Never heard the beat before, but it's just a great beat. You know what happens? When you, when you were in sin, you will have to fight against that for the rest of your life. That's why, that's why, if you want to know why I'm so into the word of God, because it says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's my only weapon against the destruction that I've done to myself. Okay? So, I was in the shower there, and this beat jumped in my head. And I'm there, and I'm like, I'm in the shower. Now, at this point, at this point, when the beat jumps in my head, what should I do? I should pray. I should, I should quote a scripture. I should pray. I should rebuke it in the name of Jesus, shouldn't I? But I didn't do that. I was like, man, this, this kind of sounds kind of good. So there I was in the shower. I'm, I'm like, I'm not getting into this, but it does sound kind of good, you know. Next thing I know, I'm in the shower, and, you know, 
I'm not even paying attention to what's happening, but it's happening. And next thing I know, my head's bopping in the shower. I'm in there, you know. Right? I'm in the shower, I'm bobbing my head. And the next thing I know, you know, then my mouth starts, you know. Now, you know, you, you get what, he understands what I'm talking about. You know, this flow starts formulating, and so I'm just like, oh, how would I jump on this beat? Something's happening. So it's just murmuring. Next thing you know, words start coming out my mouth. I'm freestyling. Are you listening to me? Just like, the forerunners are apostates. I'm just telling you what happened, brothers. I'm in there, and I'm freestyling. Freestyling is the lyrics are coming out my mouth. Now, the funny thing is, is I never was a freestyler. You follow me? And, I'm, and the whole time all this stuff is happening, I'm being quite honest with you, I really was not paying attention to what was going on. I didn't even realize that I was freestyling until probably three minutes after I was freestyling. And then I'm like, wait a second, I'm actually rapping right now. But I'm listening to myself. You know when you're listening to your own self? And then I'm like, wait a second, let me listen to what's coming out my mouth. And I noticed that what was coming out of my mouth was actually making sense. It wasn't just making sense. There was metaphors and all types of stuff coming out my mouth. And then I'm like, wait a second, I'm not even thinking. The words are coming out, and I'm thinking about, I'm saying to myself, what's coming out of my mouth? Are you listening to me? I'm listening to my own self as if I'm listening to the radio. Are you following me? And I'm like, wait a second, but I'm not even thinking about anything right now, and stuff is making sense coming out my mouth. And then all of a sudden, it began to speak to me. I'm back again, and I'm better than before. Did you hear me? And this time, we can go all the way. I'm listening to this come out my own mouth. I am shocked. I said, no, this can't be real. This is not real. The water must be too hot, too cold, something. Oh, we need to get a new brand of soap up in here. Because something's not right. I said, you know something? No, 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 no. I don't even believe this. And if I told somebody, they wouldn't even believe this. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to record myself if this is true. Because maybe I'm losing it. I'm telling you what happened. I jumped out the shower, grabbed my towel, ran to go get my phone to record myself. As I got the phone to record myself, I heard another voice come out my mouth and said, that's right, record it. And then I stopped in my tracks. And then the voice said, yeah, it's me. You know who it's me is, don't you? He said, record it, and I'll do the rest. Brothers and sisters, I fell on my knees. And I cried out to Jesus to save me. You know why I'm sharing this with you? Because we cannot afford to make any compromises with the devil. I didn't listen to that music. I wasn't going to no studios. It was a moment of compromise. A moment of compromise can lead to an eternity of being destroyed. You have to make a choice about who you're going to serve. It's a choice that we all must make. You've been here this evening. You saw what's going on. You can't leave this place and say that the light hasn't shined on you. It shined on you. If you leave here tonight, and you go back to listening, to watching, to partaking in these things, you are making a conscious decision to partake of the, of the wine of Babylon. You are making a conscious decision to sit down with the devil. And if you think you can compromise with the devil, I'm not even going to tell you good luck. Ain't no such thing. You've got it all twisted. You have to make a firm decision. Choose you this day whom you will serve. If God be God, serve him. If it's your 99 cents iTunes songs that you're willing to give your soul for, then you go do that too. Because every one of us here in this room, we're willing to die for something. You know that, right? You know that dress in some ways. You know that some fashions you partake in is sin. You know it. 
you know that is rap music sin? Is jazz sin? Is all of this secular music sinful music? Let's be real. Is, are, are most of these programs we're watching on television promoting the principles of sin? But you watch them, and you know that the wages of sin is death. That means if you're willing to watch those things, you're willing to die for them. You're willing to listen to it, you're willing to die for it. You're willing to wear it, you're willing to die for it. Everyone here is willing to die for something. Now you've got to choose what you're willing to die for. My choice is to die for the truth. What about you? I have two appeals I'm going to make this evening, every head about and every eye closed. My first appeal is to those of us here in the room this evening that know that we have some of these things within our lives. We have the music on our phones, our iPods, our computers. We have the stuff streaming through our television. We have the clothing in our closets. You know what I'm talking about. And this evening, the Lord has spoken to you and has made you to realize that you need to make a clean, distinct separation with these things. And tonight, you want to say, Lord, by the power of thy spirit, I am going to go home and throw these things in a garbage bag and dispose of them tonight. If I have a fireplace, I'll even burn them. Did you hear what I said? If it is your desire to make this commitment tonight to go home and to rid your life of these things, to erase the music, to erase the videos, to get rid of these things, I want to invite you to take a stand. Matter of fact, I invite you to come down front. I want to have a special prayer for you because I know the devil is not going to be working with you to make you carry this out. Is there anyone that needs to make this stand this evening? Don't, let, don't worry about the eyes about you because they are not going to save you. I, I continually tell you, please, do not allow the eyes of men to keep you from making a decision for God. In these last days, we're going to either stand for Christ or we are going to fall with those who bow down to the beast. Is there anyone else that would like to make this decision for the Lord this evening? It's not between me and you. It's between you and God. Tonight, you're going home to destroy these things. Tonight, you're going home to move forward in your walk with the Lord. God bless you all. Praise the Lord for you. God bless you all. Praise God for you. And I have one last appeal that I want to make. Because there may be somebody here this evening that has never given their heart to the Lord. And after looking at these things, you realize that people in this world are choosing the sides they're going to stand on. There are many people that have made a choice, a clear decision to say, I'm going to follow the devil. And you're saying, you know something? No, no, no. I want to follow Christ. If tonight you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior for the very first time, I invite you to come down front as well. I want to pray with you. Is there one that would like to receive Jesus for their Lord, as their Lord and Savior for the first time tonight? This is your decision. It's between you and God. Is there any that would like to take that stand for the Lord? If you're here already in the front, you can just raise your hand if you've never received Jesus. Then let us all pray and ask God to seal up our decisions. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your, your word. We saw clearly in the Bible how the enemy would seek to deceive us and destroy us. And now as we've looked out into society, we see that this is not a plan or an agenda that will be carried out in the future. This is one that is almost completed in its fulfillment in the hour in which we're now living, making the decision to say no more. We are making a clear break with the devil, and we are taking our stand with Jesus Christ. Father, give us the power to go to our homes and to remove these things, to erase these things, to destroy these things, to rid them out of our lives so that we can have the presence of thy spirit and the holy angels continuously with us, that we might walk covered in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing our prayers. And for those who should have taken their stand tonight but did not take their stand because they want to continue to cling to these things, or did not take their stand because they were fearful of the eyes of those who might look upon them and say, oh, them? Lord, I pray for them that you would bless them with the portion of your spirit to agitate their hearts, to keep them in a, 
in a state of not being settled until they make a full surrender of their hearts to Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing our prayers. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.